been looking forward to a film like Prometheus for many years, since I was a child in fact. The reason being is that I actually grew up watching and loving the Alien movies. And from day one, Ridley Scott, the director, has said that Prometheus is in fact set in the same universe as Alien and is also a semi sort of prequel to that movie. So for those reasons, straight away, this was one of my most anticipated films, not only of the year, but probably of the decade. I have been so excited to see Prometheus and actually have the opportunity to see it a few days ago. Now, the plot follows a ship called Prometheus, full of scientists, including Logan Marshall Green, Charlie's Theron, Numi Rapace, and the Captain Idris Elba. Um, they're all going over to a, a, a planet to basically try and find the creators or engineers of Earth. They have d since discovered um, cave paintings which allude to the fact that some sort of space creature helped create and start civilization on planet Earth. So they're going over to a distant planet to try and um, find the source of that power. Now, the, the plot itself is something that's very interesting, and this is where I really uh, commend Prometheus in that it's an old-fashioned science fiction movie in that it doesn't spoon-feed the audience with its plot. A lot is developed over the course of the, the two hours of the film. The plot itself I'm going to try and steer away from other than that kind of brief description because the less you know about this movie, the, the better. What I want to do is um, talk about what I liked and disliked in the film. Now, what I like, first of all, is the cast. The, the cast is absolutely brilliant. Now, you have um, Numa Rapace from the original The Girl with Dragon Tattoo, the better Elizabeth Salander, if you ask me, in those movies, um, better than Rooney Mara, but she's in this um, as uh, Dr. Elizabeth Shaw. Uh, one of the main characters who is leading this expedition. Uh, she's brilliant, She's um, she brings that uh, kind of um, inherent strong female character with a certain um, sexual allure as well, in the same way that Sigourney Weaver brought uh, Ripley, Ripley alive in Alien. Numi Rapace has a similar sort of presence, almost borderline butch but very feminine at the same time it, it's quite difficult to, to put your finger on um, but she is very very impressive in this film and as is Michael Fassbender who plays an android called David a lot of the film is actually spent with Michael Fassbender now I'm not going to go into spoilers but um, I, I do feel having watched it that this is very much Fassbender's movie he's not the main character he is a supporting role but what they do with the character of David the android is some of the more um, are some of the more interesting aspects of the film. You also have uh, supporting roles from Charlize Theron, who's playing a descendant of um, of Wayland, the uh, the head of the corporation responsible for the goings on in the Alien universe. She is essentially um, the villainess character, and that's quite clear from the beginning. She's the character that's that's going to um, rock the boat, so to speak, but. Like the very best villains in cinema, she is sympathetic and you can completely understand why she does what she does, the, the choices she makes and the way that Charlize Theron plays it, she is kind of a, a hard ass villainess but uh, she is also likeable and brings an almost essence of vulnerability to the part and for that reason I think that she's one of the standout performances in the film. And then you also have Idris Elba from The Wire, The Losers and, and Luther, he's in this as the captain, um, kind of uh, the wisecracking, uh, gruff, ready to rumble captain, so to speak, and and he is a standout personality in the film. While he isn't given much to do, I actually he's one of those actors who just has presence, and I really enjoyed seeing him on screen. And he is very compelling when he speaks. Um, so Idris Elba, even a, a part as small as his, um, is still impressive in a film that gives all the characters their due. Now, this being a, a Ridley Scott movie, it is modern. Ridley Scott. This is not the same Ridley Scott that directed Alien. The Prometheus, um, rather than having the claustrophobic horror movie that Alien was, is a lot grander and more epic in scope. This is new Ridley. This is Ridley who made Gladiator. Um, now, having said that, that's not a, a detrimental thing to film at all. I, I honestly think that this is probably the best film he's directed since Gladiator because he's been a bit hit and miss. I mean, American Gangster I actually quite liked, albeit the director's cut of that movie, 
but the, the other kind of movies he's done I haven't really been too keen on. Kingdom of Heaven, the director's cut of that was brilliant, but this is probably the, the best, out and out best film he's made since Gladiator, and he, he does certainly widen his scope, and, and we get more of a sense of how the universe that the Alien films are set in, how this universe works, and, and the corporations involved. You, you do see a little bit behind the curtain, which I, I found to be very interesting, and also he does bring as well his old um, tricks of the well-designed uh, sets of his movies. Um, Ridley Scott has always been a very design and visual um, director, uh, orientated director, and he always put that first and foremost in his movies. And while a lot of people argue that he's not an actor's director, I would disagree with that. I think he manages to get very good performances out of his actors. I, I don't think I've seen one of his films where the acting hasn't been up to scratch. I, I do think he's an underrated director's actor, uh, an actor's director. Sorry, um, but. Um, I, I must say that uh, the, the look of this film, and I know that they brought um, H.R. Giger um, back to design certain aspects of the film to tie it into the Alien universe, and the design is absolutely beautiful. It, it looks amazing, this movie. You could pause it at any moment and you'll have like a, a Giger painting. Um, so in that regard, I, I was very impressed and I thought that um, it was absolutely beautiful to look at. Another thing I like about the movie is the fact that they don't skimp on the gore. They actually do make every effort to make the film as, as shocking and as frightening and as gory as, as the first Alien movie. Uh, you do see a lot more than you saw back then. Obviously technology has progressed and they can show a lot more. But the, the fact that they didn't skimp on the body horror is uh, one of the major plus points for me because that's integral to this universe. Um, the, the whole design of the universe has always been very biomechanical so to have um, certain gore effects in it I, I think helps provide a certain tone to the universe and to the film specifically so um, I, I did really like the fact that they didn't skimp on um, that aspect of it uh, I, I do have to say as well there are a couple of stand standout set pieces one involving uh, Numi Rapace and again no spoilers but having to um, self-administer um, something and it's one of the tensest and most in, oh, just horrible set pieces I've seen in a long time and while it is completely bonkers and ridiculous it's very very effective so Ridley Scott has shown that he can still craft a very tense claustrophobic set piece um, in such a, a film with such a grand scale so I was very impressed by the use of body horror in this movie as well. Where the film starts to kind of wane and fall apart is certainly in its script. Now while I like the story, I think it's very interesting and I like the fact that the film deals with these big ideas like where did we come from and why are we here. Um, the script falls down first of all on the dialogue front. Now there is no small talk or, or no character sat around bitching like there were in the first Alien film, essentially truckers in space um, and you certainly got that feel from the dialogue. Um, in this, every character talks as if the weight of the world is on their shoulders and just when the film could start to be bogged down by this, that's when the horror and the body shock starts and it comes at just the right time. But I do feel like the, the dialogue especially ran the risk of bogging the film down and luckily they, they avoided that, but um, that was one issue I had with it. And another is that Ridley Scott has said on record several times that while this is set in the same universe as Alien and it is an indirect prequel, he said that, you know, this film is at least two other movies away from Alien, you know, we're dealing with something that's, you know, ancestral to Alien, It's we're not there yet, we're not at that film yet. But at the end of this movie, the last 10-15 minutes feel like they are going to lead directly into Alien. There are certain aspects of the movie, and again I'll avoid spoilers, but certain things that happen at the end that you think this is going to lead directly to the beginning of the first Alien movie and then they don't do that. And I feel like maybe the script was originally written with that intention for it to be a direct prequel. Um, either that or the editing was, was quite poor, but some of the ideas in this movie some of the shots, um, especially narratively at the end, just some of how it's executed does feel like it's a direct prequel to Alien, but then for whatever reason doesn't lead into Alien, and it's really quite bizarre. There are certain things that you see at the end of this movie and you think, oh well, 
this is about to happen and this is about to happen and that'll be alien and um, but it, it doesn't do that and I found that to be quite jarring and quite distracting and I do feel that if this wasn't intended to be a direct prequel to Alien I'd rather not have any of that stuff in because I found it to be quite distracting I was sat there trying to work out how this will tie into Alien when it's not supposed to so I do feel like maybe the script could have done with another draft or a, 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 a polish to um, to make it a bit more standalone and conclusive at the end but that's only one kind of minor issue with the film and I'm sure I'll forgive that no doubt Ridley Scott is famous for his director's cut and his extended version so I'm hoping when the Blu-ray or DVD of this comes out that there'll be a much more fleshed out um, director's cut that will explain some of the discrepancies at the end um, because while I'm a big fan of am ambiguity in cinema and especially mainstream cinema when it doesn't actually make sense that's when I start to have an issue with it and I don't think it's beyond saving I think you could probably add a couple of scenes and a couple of shots and, and tie it up all nicely at the end while still leaving it open for sequels it just felt like that the ending of the film didn't know whether or not it wanted to be standalone or a prequel so while it doesn't have an even balance of both it starts to lean more towards a direct prequel and some aspects of it are just quite frankly out of place and while that may, may sound very convoluted and I've quite struggled to to explain that that is an issue I had with the film so all in all Prometheus is a good movie it's a, a good science fiction film and it, in the old-fashioned sense that you do have to kind of work at it to, to understand the characters and, and what's going on in the plot line it, it doesn't like I say it doesn't spoon feed the audience at all but um, it, I, I like it because of that it is flawed you know, I could sit here with a laundry list this long of, um, of flaws in this movie, but every great sci-fi movie has these flaws. If it was perfect, then it wouldn't be a great sci-fi movie. They are, by their very nature, flawed. Um, the fact that it has these big ideas and it, it, you know, it has these interesting characters and great actors in it, um, but... The, the script kind of um, struggles to deliver the ideas and the execution is slightly off kilter. These are all the things that make it great. So while I have sat here and listed some of my complaints with the film, they do actually contribute to it being a great film, if that makes sense. I know that's a very contradictory statement, but um, that's how I feel about sci-fi movies. So all in all, Prometheus is really good. What I would recommend is when you go into this, try to separate Prometheus from Alien. Try to go into it n not thinking about Alien at all, try and go into it and appreciate it as a standalone movie and you'll probably enjoy it um, a lot more. There, there are certain scenes that, um, there's a lot of mirroring of Alien, this is another issue I had, the fact that Ridley Scott says that this should be a standalone film, the amount of mirroring of Alien, some scenes are directly out of Alien, I found that to be quite distracting as well, um, so it, you try and separate Alien from, from your mind and, and enjoy this as a standalone movie and you'll probably get a lot more out of it. I am looking forward to the uh, the inevitable director's cut. I'm hoping that some of the issues I've outlined will be cleaned up, but I would certainly recommend going to see this. Ridley Scott is back. You know, the, this is a Ridley Scott we love. You know, um, like I say, it's not a flawless film, but then again, neither was Blade Runner. It took about 30 years for us to get the proper version of Blade Runner, and that is a masterpiece. This is another flawed sci-fi movie from one of the greatest sci-fi directors living and working today. So I I would highly, highly recommend Prometheus.